Hello Sigmas. Today's problem is going to be really interesting because we are going to look into a very unique form of a solution to a problem. That is, we are going to first convert the problem into a differential equation and then resolve it to get the answer. Now, what is today's problem? Today we have a rope. Uh, which has a mass m, right? This rope has a mass m and it has a length l and is rotating in the horizontal plane with uh, an angular velocity omega. And uh, we have what we have to find is uh, this is the pivot, and we have to find the distance uh, r from the pivot where the tension is T of R. So actually we have to find that tension at a distance uh, R from the pivot, right? And how do we approach this problem? We consider a small section of this uh, rope. Now this section is very, very, very small compared to the entire length of the rope. So we consider the section of uh, that has a uh, width delta r. That is at a distance of r we are considering this small section delta r. Where this length delta r is very very small compared to the length r. And what would be the mass if I ask you what the mass of this small section uh, is going to be then you will be able to answer because we have done that uh, in my previous videos, we know that delta m, if I say, is the mass of that small section, is going to be lambda times uh, delta r, where lambda is the mass per unit, mass per unit length. Now, I could have uh, as well called this distance L, the small L, but I did not call it. Why? Because I wanted to make you it obvious that I'm over here, I'm working in polar coordinates. So the outward distance is the positive arc f vector, and the inward distance is the negative arc f vector. Now, because uh, this uh, small section is uh, rotating in a circle, you would know that there is going to be a centripetal force in this direction on this, which I'm calling Fc on that section, right? And if there is a net force on that section, which means the net force on this body on that section is not zero, it is equal to the centripetal force. What are the other forces on this uh, uh, section? If I redraw the section over here, then we can see that this is the section of uh, the length of delta r. And let's say at the distance uh, r, that is in the front part of the section over here, the tension is equal to T r. That is the tension at a distance r from the pivot. Whereas this part is at a distance of r plus delta r, that's why the tension of the at this part I'm calling it as r plus delta. Now here it is not t multiplied by r plus delta r, but here it is here it says that t is a function of distance from the pivot, and that is what we have to find in our problem. We have to find the tension at a distance uh, r from the pivot along the rope. And what is going to be the centripetal acceleration of this uh, section? It is going to be delta m omega square r, right? Because you might say that if tension over here and over here is different, how is the centripetal acceleration the same throughout the uh, length of this section? Basically, let's say, yeah, the centripetal acceleration at this point is equal to m omega square r obviously in the front portion and let's say the centripetal acceleration of this rope at any other point that is at the back at the last part of this uh, section let me call it 
delta m omega square it would be r plus delta r right let me call the front portion as a and the last part of that section as b then the centripetal acceleration in the last part would be m omega square r plus, r plus delta r. but what did we say we said that delta r is very small compared to r which means that here we can neglect this delta r and we can say that the centripetal acceleration of this uh, section as a whole is m omega square r and now what we have to do is apply newton's second law so tension at a distance uh, r plus delta r minus the tension at r which is the net force is equal to delta m omega square r that is the difference in tension is obviously the reason of centripetal force because centripetal force is the only force on the body because it is moving in a circle and that centripetal force itself is causing the tension in the string at that distance r from the pivot so we can call this delta t right the difference in tension in that string would be in that uh, section of the string would be equal to delta m what was delta m delta m was equal to lambda delta r so we are going to substitute that over here so we would get lambda delta r omega square r so we would get, we would get delta t upon delta r is equal to lambda omega square r now as if i put a limit over here that is we as i said delta r is a very 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 small portion of that rope right so if i put a limit delta r tends to tending to zero then this would actually as we know from the definition of derivatives would become a derivative that is it this would become dt upon dr is equal to lambda omega square Ah. Now, if you are a physics student, then differential equations are going to appear everywhere in physics. And this is just one small example. And in fact, if you do not know how to solve differential equations, it is no big deal because here there is a, a first order differential equation and hence just integration, right? You just have to know integration. So what you, we are going to do is dt is equal to lambda omega square r and take this dr on the other side, so dr. And then integrate both sides. Let's say at the pivot, where the pivot is located, uh, that is at r equal to zero, the tension in the string is equal to t naught and at r equal to uh, r, the tension in the string is T of R, as I said. Then T of R minus T naught would be equal to lambda omega square is a constant. And uh, by integrating R with respect to dr, you are just going to get R square by 2. From 0 to R, which again, if you substitute the limits of integration, you know that you are going to just get R square by 2. So we would get T of R is equal to T naught. And one thing that you have to notice is that the centripetal acceleration is going to be in the negative R direction, right? You know that already, that the centripetal acceleration is always, always points in the negative R direction. That's why you are going to have a negative sign over here over here, over here, and also over here, and hence also over here, and over here. So it is actually going to point in the negative R direction. So you are going to get T naught minus lambda omega squared R squared by T. So this is what we wanted to find, right? The tension in the string at a distance R from the pivot. So end of the story, not quite yet. We have, we still do not know what this T naught is and we have to find that. And to find that, 
actually it is not as a, a constant of integration so to find that constant of integration to find p naught we have to use something called the boundary conditions which is just a kind of a constraint that we have on the system and what constraint do we have over here you need to know that at a distance l that is at the end of this uh, rope right over here at a distance a, l in this last part of the rope the tension is zero the tension is zero simply because there is nothing on the right of that portion which can apply tension on that rope and if it is experiencing the tension from the left then the tension would just be like this and the rope would collapse into the pivot so basically the tension on that part should be zero so if the tension is zero over there so i can say that t at a distance of l is equal to zero is equal to t naught minus lambda omega squared l squared i've just substituted the l instead of r divided by t that would imply that uh, t naught is equal to lambda omega squared l squared divided by 2 so what would t of r be t of r would become lambda t of r is equal to lambda omega squared l squared divided by 2 minus uh, lambda omega squared r squared divided by 2 so this would become lambda omega squared by 2 l squared minus r squared and this is the result the final result which we actually wanted now if you know that uh, and it is very obvious that if there is a rod or a rope like this then its center of mass would be located at its center right that is at a distance of l by 2 so i'm going to exploit that fact over here just look at it. what would be the force or, or the tension in the pivot or in this position at r equal to 0 what would be the tension over here what would be the tension over here right at r equal to 0 we can find that by simply putting r equal to 0 in this equation so we would get uh, t of 0 is equal to lambda omega squared l squared by t what is lambda lambda is nothing but m divided by l so if i substitute m divided by l into omega squared l squared divided by 2 this l and this one gets cancelled i will get m omega squared times l by 2 here the tension is also due to the centripetal acceleration but what is this this is the centripetal acceleration of a mass which is located at a distance l by 2 that means we can think of the entire row as a mass a point mass located at a distance l by 2 so this distance l by 2 is kind of special yes you guessed it right this distance l by 2 is the center of mass of that row and hence this is what makes this problem even more interesting and to motivate me to create more such interesting videos do subscribe to my channel and do not forget to like this video i will see you in the, my very next uh, more even more interesting example thanks for watching